chemistry. Actually, stoichiometry is a branch of chemistry that focuses on the relationships between the amounts of reactants and products in a chemical reaction. In simple terms, it helps us understand how much of each substance is needed and produced when a reaction occurs. To have a clear concept about stoichiometry, first we need to learn the concept of mole, because it helps us count very small particles like atom, molecules, and ion, which are too small to see. The mole is a unit used to measure the amount of a substance, similar to how a dozen means 12 things. But instead of 12, one mole represents a much larger number 6.0, 2 times 10 to the 23rd, which is called Avogadro's number. For example, one mole of water contains 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd water molecules, just like one mole of carbon contains 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd carbon atoms. Actually, mole allows chemists to easily relate the mass of a substance to the number of particles it contains, making it easier to calculate and understand chemical reactions. After understanding the mole concept next, we need to learn about balanced chemical equations. A balanced chemical equation follows the law of conservation of mass, which states that matter cannot be created or destroyed in a chemical reaction. This means that the number of atoms for each element must be the same on both sides of the equation. However, the total number of atoms for each element involved in the reaction must remain constant. For example, if you have two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom in the reactants, you must also have two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom atom in the products. Without a balanced equation, the relationships between reactants and products would be incorrect, leading to wrong calculations and possibly failed experiments. Mainly, stoichiometric calculations involve three conversions, and they are mole-to-mole, mole-to-mass, and mass-to-mass -mass conversion. Mole-to-mole -mole calculations are one of the simplest types of stoichiometric calculations. They involve using the mole ratio from a balanced chemical equation to convert between the moles of one substance to the moles of another. For example, let's say we start with 5 moles of hydrogen and want to know how many moles of water will be produced using the balanced equation for water formation to H2 plus O2 to 2 H2O, we can see the mole ratio is 2 to 2 between hydrogen and water. This means that for every 2 moles of hydrogen, 2 moles of water are produced. So, if we start with 5 moles of hydrogen, we can set up a simple proportion. Since the ratio is 1 to 1, 5 moles of hydrogen will produce 5 moles of water. In mole-to-mass calculations, we take the number of moles of a substance and convert it to mass using its molar mass. The molar mass is the mass of one mole of a substance measured in grams per mole and can be found by adding up the atomic masses of the elements in a compound. For example, if you know that you have three moles of oxygen and want to know how much mass that is, you would first find the molar mass of oxygen. Each oxygen atom has a mass of approximately 16 grams per mole, and since O2 has two oxygen atoms, its molar mass is 32 grams per mole. To convert moles to mass, you simply multiply the number of moles by the molar mass. So, 3 moles of oxygen would be 3 moles times 32 grams per mole equals 96 grams of oxygen. Mass-to-mass -mass calculations are slightly more complex because they require multiple steps. In these calculations, we start with the mass of one substance and need to find the mass of another substance involved in the reaction. To do this, we first convert the mass of the given substance into moles by dividing by its molar mass. Then, we use the mole ratio from the balanced equation to convert to moles of the desired substance. Finally, we convert those moles back into mass by multiplying by the molar mass of the second substance. For example, let's say we have 20 grams of hydrogen and want to know how much water can be produced. First, we convert the mass of hydrogen to moles by dividing by the molar mass of hydrogen, 2 grams per mole. So, 20 grams divided by 2 grams per mole equals 10 moles of hydrogen. Next, using the balanced equation, we see the mole ratio between hydrogen and water is 2 to 1, 2. So, 10 moles of hydrogen will produce 10 moles of water. Finally, we can convert those moles of water into mass by multiplying by the molar mass of water, 18 grams per mole. So 10 moles times 18 grams per mole equals 180 grams of water. Mass-to-mass -mass calculations allow us to predict how much product will form from a certain amount of reactant or how much reactant is needed to produce a specific amount of product. Now, let's move to limiting reactant. The limiting reactant is a crucial concept in stoichiometry because it determines the maximum amount of product that can be made in a chemical reaction. It's called the limiting reactant because it's the reactant that gets used up first, stopping the reaction and limiting the amount of product that can form. Think of it as the weak link in your reaction. Once this reactant is gone, no more product can be produced, even if there are other reactants left over. Identifying the limiting reactant is essential to accurately predicting how much 
product you will end up with. For example, imagine you are making water with hydrogen and oxygen. Let's say you have 10 moles of hydrogen and only 3 moles of oxygen. According to the balanced equation, you need 2 moles of hydrogen for every 1 mole of oxygen. With 3 moles of oxygen, you would need 6 moles of hydrogen to completely react with it. Since you have 10 moles of hydrogen, you will have extra hydrogen left over after the oxygen is used up. In this case, oxygen is the limiting reactant because it runs out first and limits the amount of water you can make. Once the oxygen is used up, no more water can form, even though hydrogen is still available. One last key thing is to have knowledge of percent yield. Percent yield is a measure of how efficient a chemical reaction is, comparing the actual amount of product you get in the lab to the amount you theoretically should have produced based on stoichiometric calculations. In an ideal world, reactions would always go perfectly, and you'd get 100% of the product, but in real life, things don't always go as planned. Some product may be lost, reactions may not go to completion, or side reactions can happen. That's where percent yield comes in. To calculate percent yield, we use the formula percent yield equals actual yield divided by theoretical yield times 100. Theoretical yield is the amount of product you should get if everything goes perfectly, calculated from the balanced equation. Actual yield is the amount of product you actually collected in the lab. For example, if you expected to produce 10 grams of a substance but only got 8 grams, your percent yield would be 8 grams divided by 10 grams times 100 equals 80%. This means the reaction was 80% efficient. There is another important stoichiometry term known as solution stoichiometry. Actually, solution stoichiometry deals with chemical reactions that take place in solutions. A solution forms when a substance, called a solute, dissolves in a liquid, called a solvent. To measure how concentrated a solution is, chemists use molarity. Molarity tells us the number of moles of solute in one liter of solution. You can calculate molarity by dividing the moles of solute by the volume of the solution in liters. When working with solution stoichiometry, you often calculate how much of one reactant is needed to react with another. To do this, you use the molarity and the volume of the solution to find the number of moles. Once you know the moles, you can apply the balanced chemical equation to determine how much of another reactant or product is involved. For example, in a neutralization reaction, you can calculate how much acid reacts with a given amount of base. Solution stoichiometry is also important in processes like titrations. In a titration, one solution is slowly added to another until the reaction reaches its endpoint. By using stoichiometric calculations, you can accurately determine the concentration of an unknown solution. Understanding solution stoichiometry helps chemists carry out and analyze reactions in a liquid medium with precision, making it a crucial skill in many fields of chemistry. Errors in Stoichiometric Calculations One of the most frequent errors students do is forget to balance the chemical equation before starting any calculations. If the equation is not balanced, all the stoichiometric calculations will be wrong. To avoid this, always make sure the number of atoms for each element is the same on both sides of the equation before doing any conversions. Another common mistake is mixing up the mole ratios. It's easy to misread the coefficients from the balanced equation or use the wrong ratio when converting between substances. A helpful tip is to write out the mole ratio as a clear fraction and label each part to keep track of what substance you're converting from and to. For example, if the balanced equation shows a 2 to 1 ratio between hydrogen and oxygen, make sure you're consistently using 2 moles of hydrogen for every 1 mole of oxygen in your calculations. Additionally, students sometimes forget to check the units, leading to confusion between moles, grams, or liters. Always double-check that you're using the right units at each step of the problem.